everybody and welcome back to my channel. This video is going to be a bit different than the usual because at first I thought that I wanted to split my last vlog in half but turns out it's kind of the case but mostly this vlog is going to be about the process of creating a custom artwork uh, commission so you're going to see a lot about that and I'm going to try to explain as best as I can every step that I take to create a custom piece. So I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope that you're having the best start for 2022. Let's jump in. I'm super excited for you to see everything that I've done and the final result. Hello, my friends. It's me, VoiceOver Laurent. You're gonna hear a lot of me today because I did not film that many clips in person. What you just saw is me swatching my Daniel Smith watercolors in my new swatch book. I have a video about that if you want to see my whole swatch book set up. Since I recently got a lot of new Daniel Smith watercolors, I decided that it was time to update my main watercolor palette. All my new paints were not featuring in my old one, but I used my new paints all the time. Every time I painted I used them and I had to take out the tools and my main watercolor palette, so it was time to include them in my palette. At first I did not realize that I needed to do a new swatch sheet, which turned out to take quite a lot of time. I had to be careful not to forget the name of each color while switching them from a palette to another because I also changed the orders in which the paints were placed in my new palette, so I had to be very careful and make sure to write the names down before moving them so I would not end up with a mysterious unnamed color. wanted to work on a commission that I have and I thought it would be interesting if I showed you the different steps that I took to create this commission. I am by no means a professional artist but from time to time I take commissions when I feel like it. Usually they stress me out but this one I was very excited about so I thought it could be really fun. What I am tasked of doing is um, creating a painting with a dinosaur on it for my friend's kids. First thing first, what I did was to create some thumbnails. So I did these ones on a sheet of paper and these I created in my sketchbook. I wish that all of these thumbnails were on the same page because I thought, oh, we lost the sun. <laughs> it's going to come back. Right, it's back. Okay, so um, I wish that these thumbnails could be all on the same page because then I would have a better, a better overall view of all the thumbnails that I created, but that's fine. Now what I will do is decide on a composition that I like best and make a more detailed thumbnail or a couple more detailed thumbnails using that composition specifically. I also wrote down some keywords to guide my drawing. So I knew that I wanted layers in the landscape. I wanted pastel colors, some greens, yellows, orange, pinks. I wanted the drawing to be simple, to be on the minimal side. And I wanted to add some textures in the landscapes. These were all the things that I kept in mind while doing my thumbnails. I did not put too much effort in the thumbnails. I did not render anything. I drew them really quickly. 
I forgot the name of this dinosaur, but I did some research to know in which habitat it lived. And it pretty much lived in the forest or on plains, somewhere that you can find a lot of grasses and trees. And so I had a big range of, oh, we lost the sun again. Come back, sun, come back. I'm working. <laughs> That's what happens when you use natural light. Oh, it's back. All right, yes, I was saying that this dinosaur um, lived in a habitat that gives me a lot of range, a lot of freedom. I really wanted the dinosaur to be on top of a hill and then there would be a drop, but you could see in the distance that there would be some mountain ranges and some other hills. So that's what I wanted to do in my landscape. So these are the thumbnails that I drew while I was at work. I wrote my keywords here so I would remember them. And as you see, there's nothing too detailed. The dinosaur is not very cute, but that's fine. <laughs> oh, and you'll see that I kind of wanted to add like a, these dinosaur birds. <laughs> I don't know what they're called. I kind of wanted to add one in the landscape. So that's going to be an option. And I drew these in my sketchbook here. A bit more detailed shading wise, but still very rough. I like these kinds of like pointy volcanoes. I like them in the distance. And here I kind of did only like rounded hills and a single volcano. But I really like this kind of like landscape, so I think I'm gonna do a mix of rounded hills like this and more pointy volcanoes in the distance. And I also played with this kind of sun that is very like um, cartoony with the sun rays. So I'm contemplating doing something like this or maybe just the sun without any sun rays. We will see, but I kind of like this. So I think I'm going to go with this one. So what I'll do is I'll take a picture with the iPad, I'll put it in Procreate, and then I will work on a final sketch, something a bit more detailed. And after that, I'll do a couple of versions with my color palettes, just to see which color will go where, and then we'll be ready to put it on paper. trying to find some references of the dinosaur that I'm drawing and also of some plants I could include in the drawing. Until then I had just a very general idea of the rough shapes of everything, but now was the time to refine. I think I'm done with my sketch. So that's what it looks like. And now I am going to work on the color palette. 
at least pick the colors that I'm going to include. And this one is easy because my friend already gave me a picture of a blanket that she wants the illustration to match with. So I'm just going to pick the colors from this blanket and create a color palette from that. I did a couple of color palette options and I settled on one. So this is the color palette I'm going to go for. And now what I'm going to do is that I'm going to use my watercolor sketchbook for the first time, try to find colors that would fit with the colors that I chose, see if I need to do specific mixes and if so, which color to mix together. And also I would like to play with textures because the goal of this is have a simple illustration but with a lot of textures in it. So I want to use granulating paints. I want to um, do some mixed media as well. So I'm just going to work in this journal here to have a clearer plan. have a commission and I've worked a long time on the sketch and I really want to have the exact same sketch as a final painting then what I do is that I transfer the sketch onto my paper so first I need to print the sketch only the outlines and since my paper is not big enough I need to stick it together with some tape cut it the right size and then I can use a charcoal paper to transfer it. You'll see the process of transferring it a little bit later on. Also, when I do a commission, another step that I take, which I don't normally take with my other paintings, is that I do a practice round. This time I transferred a smaller version of the sketch in my sketchbook and I really did a practice because I wanted to nail the colors, get the mistakes I could do out of my system, learn about the steps in which to do the final version. So this stage adds quite a bit of time to the whole process but it's super helpful and when I have a client that is paying for a painting, then I take that extra step. I decided to use some masking fluid on top of my painting, which is something that I had never done before. So far I had only used it on the paper with no paint on it at all, so I was not sure if it would rip the paint off or something, but that's exactly why I did this practice so I would find out and see if it's a technique I could use in my final painting.
is the time for the big reveal. Did the masking fluid ruin my painting or not? The answer is no. And the effect was super interesting because I painted on top of it, so I got this beautiful lighter tone texture that I reused in my final painting. And how satisfying is removing masking fluid? Ah. Now is the time to start the final painting, the official painting. First of all, I taped my paper onto a wood board because I thought it would be easier, it would allow me to move it around if I needed to. And then I wet the paper so I can stretch it a little bit. I don't know how useful it really is, but I still do it just in case. Now I'm transferring the sketch onto the paper and for that I use a charcoal paper. I put it charcoal side down and then I just have to trace the drawing on top of it and the charcoal is going to transfer onto my paper. To do that I use some colored pencils because I want to see where I traced and where I didn't because the first time I transferred a drawing onto a paper, I did not do that and I kind of forgot where I went and where I did not, so it's, it just complicated everything a little bit. So that's a little trick that I found with experience. In my practice painting, I had drawn the outlines using the ink pen but I did not like the look in the end. I thought it was too harsh. I thought, I don't know. I wasn't sure if I wanted an outline or not. So I tried it and I did not really like it. So this time around, I decided to draw an outline, but using similar colors to the painting. We would still have an outline, but it would be more subtle. It was a risk that I took, but in the end, I really liked the end result.
using some salt in my watercolors. This is a technique that I have tried before and that I have tried in my practice painting. And I love the result so much because it made the ground look like sand. But the second time around, it did not work as well. And I don't know why, but it created some really interesting effects, some kind of wave-like effects. So I, I was pleasantly surprised. And when it was dried, you will see me later on, I will add some more salt to try to create the sand effect that I was missing because I still want that effect. I changed this time is that I decided to use more vibrant colors. I naturally tend towards a muted color palette. I think it's just my my preferences, my personal style, and it's what I did the first time around in my practice run. But then I thought about it and I reminded myself that I am creating this piece for a little boy and children love color. Children need pops of colors, so I decided to make my painting a bit brighter, a bit more vibrant, and it was the right decision, 100%. The final version, the colors are just so much better. So I'm glad that I did that.
this painting inspired me so much. So I'm thinking of doing some prints with it. I took some pictures before giving it off to my client. So I can always make some prints. And also I thought that I could do a series about some dinosaurs and various environments. I think that would be cool. I could do some tiny paintings with dinosaurs on them. Some bigger ones like this. I don't know. I did not think that this would be a subject that would interest me. It felt like a hobby in my hobby. So it's kind of like a place where I can just play with colors, do some simple designs and just have a lot of fun. So definitely I'm thinking about doing more of these. Now we are getting closer to the final stages of this painting where I add a bit more colors. I add contrast and I add some details. This part is always my favorite. Well, do I have a favorite part? Hmm, that's a good question. Every part where I paint is my favorite. I just loved adding the details. I just love the colors that I chose. I think maybe if I did some prints, it would be interesting to see what it looks like with some outlines. This is something that I will be able to try digitally. So that's really cool because I can try out different things without the risks. So this is something that I will play around with for sure. Finally, the last thing I did in the creation of this piece is adding a bit of details using some colored pencils. I thought I could refine some parts where I feel like the edges were a little bit off. I added some details in the plants and the dinosaur. This is something that I wanted to practice because I decided that I would use some mixed medias in this piece. I did a little bit because of this final part, but I would like to explore that more in the future. So this is the final result. I like this piece so, so much and I've had so much fun creating it. It's not my style so much, but I had 
a lot of fun doing this. It feels like something that is a bit more, less artsy, but more creative. You know, it's easier than doing something new, something that I, I'm trying to develop a style or, or trying some oil paint for the first time. This is like a, a break from my hobby. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did doing this painting and editing and the whole process. I hope that you have an amazing 2022. I wish you the best and I will see you soon. Bye.